Hello. Hello, everyone. Hi there. I'm Teacher Oakley. Welcome to Verbling. And uh, for the next hour in this class, we're going to be learning some vocabulary. To be exact, we're going to be looking at idioms. To be more specific, we're going to be looking at idioms that involve trains. Choo -choo. Uh, okay, um, trains are iconic an iconic part of English-speaking culture, and uh, there are uh, many naturally occurring expressions or idioms that involve trains. Uh, first of all, uh, we're going to be uh, looking at these train idioms by doing some fill-in-the-blank or mix-and-match type exercises, maybe a little reading as well today. Uh, we'll uh, also discuss the idioms as well as any kind of related possibly related uh, idioms, um, and I will try to illustrate when and how these idioms are used, uh, because we use different idioms in different ways. And um, finally, please do, uh, I do encourage students to share with me idioms that you have in your language or expressions that you have which are may be similar, maybe they're totally different idioms, but they have the same meaning, or maybe you have the same idioms. I always find that interesting to talk about uh, shared idioms. Okay. Hello. Uh, hello, Nader. How are you? Okay. Nice to see you again as well. And uh, hello, Victor. Hello, Oakley. Can you hear Hi. me? Okay. Loud and clear. Perfectly loud and clear. Because, uh, I had problem today with my microphone. I don't know why, but it's uh, my sound uh, just disappearing during the class. Really? I don't know. Yeah. If I will disappear, that's why. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, uh, right now you are super clear, super loud and clear right now. I bought new headphones. <laughs> I okay. install all the programs, but it that didn't help. Okay. I changed my browser from Chrome to Firefox. Probably it will be work. Maybe. Sometimes something happens there. Yeah. It sounds it sounds perfect right now. Everything's great. Okay. Glad to hear. Okay. Glad to see you. All right. Okay. Well, gentlemen, I have to tell you, I'm a slightly discombobulated today. I'm a little uh, a little unorganized simply because uh, I had a power outage for 10 minutes just before the class. I literally got my power back and there was 30 seconds before class time. So I just hustled to get the classroom open. Uh, Nader, I, I was using one of my favorite words and it can be your favorites too. Writing it down here. Discombobulated. No, no, I misspelled it. It's hard to spell. Uh, let me try that again. I'm a slightly, I said, I'm slightly discombobulated. I forgot a syllable there. Discombobulated, disorganized, a little uh, frantic. You're trying to do too many things at once, so you're uh, not mentally prepared or you're uh, mentally disorganized. You feel disoriented is close to the uh, synonym. It is a funny word. It's fun to say. Discombobulated. And no one will know what you're talking about either. But it is a real word. <laughs> okay. Uh, it is a funny word. It's a strange word. Okay, anyway. All right. While I'm talking about that funny word, I managed to get my uh, act together somewhat. <laughs> So uh, let's get started. I'm going to do a screen share. First of all, uh, we're going to look at a little reading passage, a very short one, uh, about railway trains and a little bit about the history thereof. Uh, quite simple. Uh, in, in this paragraph here, uh, 
we have a number of words which talk about railway trains or related to trains. Um, so, Nate, there. Obviously, you're in the text mode, so Victor and I can read this and talk about the words as they come up. Victor, can you get us started by reading? We'll take turns. We'll just uh, take turns reading. You can read the first sentence. I'll read the second one, and so on. Okay. okay. Trains run on railway trucks, which are made up of rails. All right. So related words, of course, related to trains. Uh, obviously, railway and tracks. Okay. Thanks, Nader. And rails, all right? These are all words related to trains. Um, hello, Max. Max is also having problems today, actually. <laughs> He's been trying to get into my classes all day. Well, let's hope he comes back. Okay, I'll take the, sec the next one here. Uh, trains cannot climb hills easily. So in the past, tunnels had to be built through hills and mountains. Okay, maybe tunnels is kind of related. <laughs> Max keeps trying. Uh, okay, uh, Nate Air. You want to read the third sentence here? Oh, and then he disappeared. <laughs> what is going on, Victor? I don't Victor, know. I don't think it's you and your microphone. I think it's something else entirely. Oh, okay. Maybe. Maybe it's... I think it's sunspots. There's some kind of EMP thing going on <laughs> today. No, I could participate, but uh, it's only with my microphone problem. Uh -huh. Yeah. Okay, well, my power just went out for 10 minutes on a bright, sunny, clear day. Why? I have no idea. I I'm thinking sunspots, solar flares, something's going on. All right. Anyway, Victor, can you take this next sentence? If a train is... Deler, dera, oh, derailed. It there comes you go. Over All right, derailed. derailed. All right, derailed. All right, so that, uh, or we can say it jumps the tracks is another way to say a train is derailed. It jumps the tracks or jumps off the tracks. This is not good if you happen to be riding the train, of course. At the end of a railway line, usually in a station, are buffers. Okay, obviously trains come into stations. Uh, there's kind of a, I don't know, a barrier at the end of a track. These are called buffers. Uh, all right, let's see if everybody is successfully in. Something's wrong. Yeah, Nader, something's wrong with verbling or... Or Google, I, or I, I suspect they're solar flares. We're getting some kind of EMP action. I don't know. Hello, Max. Uh, Hello again. Yeah. You're good. <laughs> <laughs> I don't I, know why. I, I I need to refresh several times my page, and after that I come in. Yeah. Okay. No, you're not the only one. We all seem to be having some kind of strange problems today. Uh, okay. Anyway, good to, good to have you in. Uh, and hello, Alexandra. Hi. Hi. <laughs> I'm not experiencing any problems today. <laughs> yeah, you had your turn yesterday. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Well, okay. Uh, okay. Um, we're just reading this short paragraph and talking about some of the related vocabulary, <laughs> words that are related to trains. Max, can you read this next sentence? Sometimes, if a train does not stop in time, it hits the buffers. Yeah, the buffers are at the end of the track, I guess, to stop the train. Um, okay. Okay, that's simple enough. Alexandra, can you read the next sentence? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Uh, the first trains were steam trains, but today they are more likely to be diesel or electric. Very good. Okay, so we have a number of kind of trains. Steam trains, diesel trains, electric trains. Very good. 
And last, very fast trains are called express trains. Well, yes and no. I might argue this last sentence. Um, if I'm taking a train in New York City, for example, I can take the local or the express. The local is going to stop at each station along the way, and the express train will go a long distance and stop at a specific station down the line. Um, so, okay, well, while this is true, okay, fast trains are called express trains, but so are trains that do not stop on local stations, but um, go from point A to point B. All right, anyway, so much for that. Let's get to the idioms. You know, I'll claim, well, maybe my comment is going to be a little bit off topic and a little bit irrelevant, but I was really <laughs> surprised to know that the train tickets, um, in terms of the price, are comparable to plane tickets. Yeah. So it's a very, very, very expensive means of transport in the United States. And uh, when I was choosing uh, the, the um, so how to get to New York from Washington, I went by bus because trains were equal to um, plane. I was surprised because in Russia, trains are the cheapest way of traveling. Uh huh. And you're, I yeah. totally agree, I agree with you. Yeah, you're right. Uh, or I could say that plane fare, <laughs> I look at it the other way. Maybe I'm optimistic. I don't know. But I always thought, well, plane, uh, plane flights are actually very cheap in the United States. They're the same price as trains. <laughs> <laughs> I, maybe I was brainwashed uh, being an American. I don't know. Um, that's how I kind of looked at it. Because I kind of look at it that way because in reality when I was very young, for example, taking a flight, a domestic flight from one city to another was really expensive. If I wanted to go from New York to Houston, Texas, for example, when I was young, it would have cost me 250 or $300. And then in the 80s, they had the discount plane, uh, the discount airlines, and you could go that same distance for like $50. But a train would cost you $100. So planes became much, much cheaper. Much, much cheaper in the last. Uh, and they're highly competitive. There's so many airlines in the United States that they're extremely It's interesting competitive. because in Russia, it's just the other way around. <laughs> mm -hmm. Right. Well, OK. Well, there you go. I think I just hit on it. In, in the United States, there are many competing airline companies, lots. So they have to be mindful of their prices. They have to stay competitive. But trains, there's Amtrak. And who else? No one else. <laughs> mm -hmm. And it's, it's a quasi-government-run railway. Uh, they get government funding. Otherwise, they would go out of business. They're like uh, subsidized by the government in the United States. But they have no one to compete against, except oh. flights and buses. There's no other train company. Maybe so, that's the reason. Mm -hmm. may, maybe, yeah. Monopoly. Yeah, it's a mon exactly. It's a monopoly. You're, you're, that's correct. Okay. Anyway, uh, but um, Alexandra is completely right. If you're in the United States, you're going to find that it's probably cheaper to take a flight and definitely a bus is much cheaper always uh, okay let's see using some of the words we looked at as in the reading uh, let's see if we can uh, just create the idiom and then see if we can figure out what it means Victor how about a Victor like at the end of the tunnel very good excellent light at the end of the tunnel what does that mean? How might you use it? It's about last hope. <laughs> yeah, well, not really. Okay, it's our last hope. It, okay, it's not really. It's closer to the idea that you've been in a, a dark place for a long time. 
Um, okay, you, you've had a, a, a difficult time, all right? A light at the end of the tunnel may refer to an escape. It may refer to the end of a job or a project or, you know, you're trying to get your graduate's degree and all that studying and doing your... Um, your thesis and oh my god there's so much work to do and finally okay uh, I'm giving my thesis desertion tomorrow and I only have one more final examination I finally see the light at the end of the tunnel all right an ending to a lot of hard work or a, a you know a difficult time closer to that kind of thing okay all right um, Okay, Nader. Uh, okay, you're asking about derailed. Okay, if you're if you're derailed, what was I talking about? Ah, I'm demonstrating. <laughs> okay, Alexandra started talking about uh, plane flights and train flights. She kind of derailed the class slightly. <laughs> <laughs> All right, just as an example, I totally don't mind the conversation, and it was very interesting. Just as an example, okay, off the tracks of where we were going. All right, that's actually a perfect example. So very useful. Thank you, Alexandra. Um, <laughs> all right. If you get derailed, you go off the tracks. You're off your path that you had planned. All right. Anyway, uh, Nader, B, A1 something, mind. What do you think? A one what mind? A one I don't know mind. <laughs> no, a one express mind. No, no, that's not it. Does anybody know? Anybody else? I don't Maybe know. Maybe one. So, Max? I would be say a one way mind. Oh, ah. <laughs> one, way. one rail? No. Ooh. Uh, yeah, although you bring up a lot of interesting material. Alexandra, what did you. Uh, the same. I thought maybe one way. That's the only thing which comes to mind. Actually. Okay. Victor, did you, I think you were trying to say something as well. I suggested Victor. one rail. Uh, one rail. Oh, okay. Oh, no, but these are interesting ideas. You're very co close, Victor. A one-track mind. Mm -hmm. Okay. A one-track mind means meaning that uh, that's all you think about. Um, people often use this idiom to talk about somebody who only thinks about S E X. Oh my God, you have a one-track <laughs> mind. Get your mind out of the gutter. Okay, I might say. Uh, all right, teenage boys seem to have a one-track mind, for example. I might say. Or, you know, equally, um, if you're obsessed with something, sure, a scientist has a one-track mind. He can only relate everything to his latest experiment, you know. So it doesn't, it's not really negative or positive. It's neutral. But uh, that's, that's the idea. I want to address Victor's suggestion, though, a one-rail mind. Now, we do have... I don't know how you got how the underground or the subway works in your various countries, uh, but the ones in in America, they're the two rails ha are the ones that the uh, the train runs on, of course. But then there is a third rail, which is electric. It's where electricity comes from, and it's highly, highly dangerous. <laughs> So we do have expressions that talk about the third rail. Oh my God, he hit the third rail. Meaning, okay, he electrocuted himself. He did. Uh, he he hurt himself. Um, don't touch the. Th that's like touching the third rail. We refer to the third rail. Not really specific idioms, but it has an idiomatic kind of connotation as just something extremely dangerous. People who jump off the tracks to commit suicide don't usually jump in front of a train. They just jump down and touch the third rail. Zap! It's some ridiculous 
150,000 volts or something. Uh, I don't know. It's a lot. It's huge. And you're not going to live. Um, okay. Uh, one way was not... Okay. Was not a bad guess. Uh, but uh, not quite it. Um, Max, can you try to see? Uh, under my own... Cool. I, I don't know. <laughs> Uh, okay, that's a tough one. Does anybody know this one? I, uh, okay. Hmm. How can I use this? This is not very under my, common. Under my nose, I know. <laughs> under my nose? Yeah, okay. <laughs> it was under my nose. <laughs> the whole time. All right, it was obvious the whole time. No, under my own, it's very important to say own here. Um... Probably no one knows this. Under my own steam, using my own power, um, using my own physical strength, uh, or on my own. It's, it can mean physically, and it often does. Uh, my car broke down, so I had to get home under my own steam, physically, uh, like using my own energy. Or a little bit more idiomatically, um, Meaning you had to do it all by yourself. Uh, okay, uh, everyone else in, on my team dropped out of my project, and I had to finish under my own steam. Actually, that's a pretty good example. Uh, okay, on my own, close to that, yeah. Alexandra, how about D? <laughs> Hit the road, Jack. <laughs> I don't come back. No more, no more, no more, no more. Okay, yeah. hit the buffers. Hit the buffers. Here, here it is right up here already. Ah, uh, yeah. Hit the buffers. Now, this is very British. Um, okay, so if you hit the buffers, I guess this is Americans would more likely say hit the wall. <laughs> like uh, having a hindrance, something which hinders you or an obstacle. Well, exactly, because the buffers are an obstacle. Mm -hmm. um, okay, but uh, related for American, when an, if an American says "hit the wall," uh, I've been okay. I've I've got twelve classes a day, and by my midnight class, I hit the wall. I was sitting there in front of my students, just staring at him. <laughs> I had nothing to say. My mind was a blank. I'm completely drained, and I just. Uh, we talk about marathon runners hitting the wall, like an exhausted. obstacle, so exhausted they can't even lift their foot. Um, yeah, can they, they talk about marathon runners. Can you continue once you hit the wall? You've reached the total end of your endurance. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, so I, I, I guess hit the buffers is close to that. Again, no American would say hit the buffers. I, I know what they are, but I guess it's pretty British. Um, Victor, how about E? Ran out of... I have no idea. Okay, it's, cl it's kind of related to C. If, uh, if you run out of steam, what do you think that means? Oh... Hmm. Uh, Victor, what do you think? I, I was doing, I was doing my, uh, I was doing my essay, and I was going along pretty good, but then I just ran out of steam, ran out of gas. Yeah, Nadir. Lost interest. Lost, Lost interest. interest. Got Much tired. Worse. Yeah. Yep. Lost interest, lost energy, lost motivation. Yeah, all pretty much all of that. Got sick of it. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, and we also, Nader is correct, we also just say ran out of gas. Very similar. So is it more about energy or interest? Mm, well, kind of both. Or it can mean both or either, or a combination of both. 
Yeah, more physically, obviously it's energy. I was running the marathon. I ran out of steam. I couldn't finish. Okay, obviously you're talking about energy. Um, okay. It's uh, always in, in the past? Only in the past? Well, no. Oh. No, not necessarily. I don't know how... Okay, present tense, I don't know how you would... I, I don't think you can do it in the present tense. You could you could predict it. I predict that he will run out of steam after the 20th mile. I mean, so I could use future. Um, I don't know how you would possibly do it in present tense, however. I'm running out of steam. I think oh. I'm running. <laughs> okay, yeah, that would work, actually, present continuous. Continuous, yeah, not simple. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. That's good. That's a good example. I think you're right. That would work. That that would make sense. Okay. <laughs> ah, Nirvana. Uh, <laughs> name that tune. Oh, we should do that someday here at here at Verbling. Name that tune in two notes. We could all play our ringtones and see if we could fool the class. <laughs> It's Nirvana. Uh, okay, Nader, uh, right off the what? Right off the bat. Yeah, that's the first thing I think of too, actually. Um, okay, right off the bat, it means immediately. It's totally the first thing I can think of as well. But related to trains, actually, going back to what Victor said earlier, right off the track or right off the rails, either one. Actually, I've heard both, but um, yeah, uh, she's come right off the right off the rails. All right, she's okay. Again, it can be related to what we talked about earlier, getting derailed from something. It's very much uh, same same thing, but it can also be used to refer to somebody who just freaks out. <laughs> Oh my God! She found out her husband uh, had impregnated another woman, and she went right off the rails. I'll tell you what, <laughs> train wreck. Uh, yeah, she went crazy. She lost her mind. Uh, right off the top of my head, right off the bat, is the first thing I can think of. Uh, Max, related to trains, how about G? Maybe back on trails, rails, rails, back on rails. Well, we usually say back on track. You have the right idea. Track. Yeah. So you get derailed, maybe. You get um, distracted from something, from your planned path, and then you, you get back on track. You bring it back to the uh, original idea. All right. Um, okay, I was training for the Olympics, but then I went to Amsterdam and partied for two weeks, and now I need to get back on track. Okay, something like that. Uh, Alexandra, let off. <laughs> Maybe let off the rails? Uh, no. Track? <laughs> No, everything is either about track or what's the other thing everything is about here. <laughs> let track. off. Yeah. Nate Air's got it. Nate Air figured it out. You you let off steam. Ah. Oh, uh, mm -hmm. Okay. Now I don't like this is related to trains to tell you the truth. Although I guess it is. You have to let steam out of the the boiler in a train. If you let the steam pressure build and build and build, what's going to happen? Simple fit. Uh, explode. Yes, it will explode. Uh -huh. Exactly. So um, we often. Um, I think this is more related to this group of idioms that have to do with boiling something. You reach a boiling point. You're very angry. You have to. Um, okay, you, you blow your top. You explode. Right, like a pot of boiling water. If the pressure builds up and there's no vent, it, the pop, the top will pop off. Okay, so you need to let off steam, or 
vent. Okay, very commonly, all right, I want to talk about my problems and tell you about how I feel about things. I want to maybe, I'm angry at my boss. I need to vent. I need to let off steam. Um, to vent usually means to just talk about it, get it off your mind. If you let off steam, maybe you go out to a bar and you dance on the table. <laughs> okay. Maybe you go do a more healthy physical activity. You go play football or play basketball for a couple hours and just get rid of that negative energy. All right, but all, all of these are closely related. The whole thing about steam and meaning um, stress and angry stress, and you need to let it let it go. Uh, okay, I want to welcome Sun Ming to the class. Hello, good to see you. How are you? Good to see you as well. Been a while. Nice to see you. I'm good, thanks. Uh, nice to have you back in class. Um, okay. Whose turn is it? I forgot where we are. Uh, Sun Ming, uh, what do you think here? On the right, something to do with trains. Train? On the right does mean not on the left. No, on the correct. Here, right does not mean right and left. It means oh, okay. correct. On the right. On the right, what? Can we add a word? Direction? Medium. Direction? Distinction? Uh, no. Um, usually, okay, that isn't a, a very much a fixed phrase. Uh, so we say in the right direction. Okay. Uh, but that's within. In this case, we're looking for a word that has to do with trains. So we got to go back to, <laughs> back again to track. Yeah. Right. On the right track. All right. What does that mean uh, if you're on the right track? It just mean you go on the. On on the right um, destination. Okay, okay, you're going in the right direction, the right destination. But okay, usually we use this idiom to show that you're trying to solve a problem. Oh. And you're you're going in the right direction to solve the problem. Mm. Okay. Yeah. Scientists, for example, may may get off on the wrong track and start looking in the for answers in the wrong way but then they maybe they get back on track and they go they're on the right track we're on the right track okay we're starting to improve or it looks like we're gonna get good results um, Kim uh, Nader asked can we say off track definitely uh, again similar to derailed uh, okay, you're way off track. So can we? This meeting has gone way off track. Can we get back to the subject which we wanted to discuss in the meeting? That would be very common, as a matter of fact. Yeah. So okay, lots of idiomatic expressions and collocations to talk about track. Track. Uh, definitely. Okay, last one here. I totally don't remember where we were. So, uh, Nader, what do you think? Like, uh, like an, <laughs> no, there's a clue. Like a pass, <laughs> like a pass train. Okay. Max, what do you think? Maybe old. Like an old train. <laughs> 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 express, express, express. Very good. All right, Victor. Good job. Like an express train. Okay, so <laughs> we do something very fast or quickly, uh, like an express train. Uh, great. I think I've heard this once or twice, but actually, um, I've heard a different expression, like a freight train. Um, Okay, which 
which we didn't look at. Freight it means things that you haul, things that you carry, commodities or goods that you carry by truck or train or ship is freight. Um, a freight train goes fast, it doesn't stop, and it's very heavy. So if you do something like a freight train, usually we talk about somebody physically. He came through the crowd like a freight train. Okay, all right, just fast, heavy, knocking people out of his way, um, absolutely just smashing people down as if he was a train. All right. Sweeping the competition. Yeah, okay. Well, you, you might hear it. Okay. You might hear it in that way. Um, they, they, okay, I'm getting some severe yeah, echo, severe echo from somebody. Somebody. Somebody's, somebody's got the verbaling verbaling window open. Okay. Thank you. Uh, yeah, you could you could say that sweep the competition. Okay, Th that would be common to hear um, a, a sports announcer say, um, "Oh, uh, the San Francisco Giants uh, went through their competition like a freight train." Mm hmm. Okay, they just powered them over. Okay. Yeah. Actually. All right. Now to use the idioms. And, okay, we talked about them enough. Let's see if you can actually use them in sentences. See if you can remember them, too. Uh, okay, Max? Max, are you there? Not really? <laughs> More problems? Okay. Alexandra, can you try number one, please? I'm sorry. Um... Okay, could you please scroll up? I have a question. I forgot. <laughs> sure. Sure. Uh, F. What was in F right off there? Uh, uh, right off the track. Right, right off, off the, the rail. Track, right off the rail. Uh huh. And that means what? Because because I just. Okay. Okay. Uh, it can mean two uh, things. It can mean two things. Mhm. Mm we can ref be referring, to going, be referring path, to going off path, like we've said many times. Like we said many times. Or if somebody, or if somebody totally loses their uh, temper, uh, temper. All right. Somebody All right. freaks out. Somebody oh freaks my out. gosh! She uh, heard her husband was her having an affair. Having she went affair. right off the rail. Uh -huh. Right off the mm -hmm. rail. Mhm. Mm mhm. Mm All right. All right. Mhm. Mm Okay. So, okay. Uh, the government's first two years were very successful, but then everything seemed uh, to hit uh, the buffers. Yeah, hit the buffers. Yeah, hit okay. the buffers. Okay. Ran into some obstacles. Ran into some obstacles. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, Victor. Uh, Victor. Number two. Number two. I don't need the lift. I don't need the lift. I'll get there. I'll get there. <laughs> by the <laughs> By the No, not quite. Yeah, Alexandra, not quite. I'm, Alexandra, I'm getting a... I'm getting a... Echo. Strong echo. echo. Strong echo. From me? Yeah. Really? Uh, yeah, I don't know if you have verbaling open or... Okay. Mute yourself. That'll, that'll work. Thank you. Victor... Uh, okay, I'll get there. N uh, no, not on the tracks. I don't need a lift. A lift, can I get a lift? That means a, a ride in your car. Um, I don't need a lift. I'll get there, okay, by walking. So, do you remember this one? Uh, I'll get there by using my own energy. Okay, I'll get there by my own steam. Okay. All right. Uh, okay, number three, Sun Ming. Uh, we want to design an affordable, eco 
any car, there are one or two serious problems, but basically we're on the right track. Very good. Yep, this is a very good example of how the idiom is used. Okay, and you would commonly hear, basically, for the most part, pretty much, we're on the right track. Max, you're back. Great. Go ahead and try number four. Okay. Our business has had a very difficult two years, but things are slowly beginning to improve. There is a... Uh, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> ah, there is I get it. Oh, okay. Light at the end of the tunnel. Ah, okay. Another very good example of what I was trying to explain. You go through a difficult time, but uh, okay, you see some kind of relief ahead. A light at the end yeah. of the tunnel. Very good. Alexandra, number five. Uh, the Conservatives lost the election. Their campaign started well enough, but it just ran a week before the actual election. But it just ran out of steam. Very good. Okay. It ran out of steam. All right here. It ran out of steam. Yeah, they just lost momentum. It lost energy. Um, who, who knows why? Maybe it has to do with um, the motivation of the volunteers. So see, see that's kind of what I mean when I was, you were asking, does it mean energy or motivation? Well, yeah, both. Mm -hmm. um, either or both. Uh, okay. Victor, number six. Since his wife left him, Mark's. Mark's lost his job and he's drinking heavily. He's really gone. I don't know. Well, right of the track? Doesn't sound like he's on the right track. <laughs> yeah, that's mm -hmm. right. He's really gone off the tracks. Okay. Definitely. Or right off the tracks. Yeah. So it's not necessary to always say right. So in this case, I would just say he's really gone off the track. Uh, okay. Um, mm -hmm. All right. But yeah, yeah, that's right. You had the correct answer. Uh, Sun Ming, how about number seven? Oh, how was your night out with Jerry? Terrible. All the talked about was Dim Twins. He's got a let me sure. Yeah. Watch a watch a He's obsessed a, by one thing. A rant my? <laughs> yeah. This is a one track mind. Right. One track mind. One track mind, yes, he, he's obsessed by one idea. One. Yeah, he's got a one track mind. Okay, that's it. Max, number eight. Do you fancy a game of squash tonight, Tim? <laughs> Do you fancy a game of squash tonight, Tim? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. Okay. Good okay. idea. I need to do something to... I'm really tense. I've had a very difficult week at work. I need okay. to do something to let it let off some steam. Yeah, yeah, okay. I need to let off some steam. Or I need to do something to let off some stream. steam. Yeah, you could say it either way, actually. Yeah, that's it. All right. You're too tense. You're stressed. You need to let off steam. That's it. And you know, <laughs> you can do that through some uh, hard or some hard exercise, or <laughs> some people do it another way by partying or whatever. Yeah. By the way, it's squash, Max. Squash. Uh, could, could you read the question, please? I need. <laughs> okay. All right. You want to hear my 
my intonation. Yeah, okay. yeah, intonation, yeah. Yeah. Do you fancy a game of squash tonight, Tim? Okay. <laughs> I think I, I, could, I can <laughs> repeat it. Uh, and furthermore, I would probably ellipse, use ellipsis. I would probably drop the, um, the auxiliary do and the subject because I'm talking to Tim. I would probably, in reality, just say, fancy a game of squash tonight, Tim? And probably, okay. since, I'm, since I'm American and I don't say fancy very much, <laughs> I would say, game of squash tonight, Tim? <laughs> to be truly honest about how I would say that, you want to play squash tonight? Uh, okay. Alexandra, how about number nine? <clears throat> How are things at work after the fire? It's taken us three months to sort things out, but everything is um, is getting back on track. Get, yep, yeah. everything's getting back on track, or everything's um, everything's on the right track. I, either one is perfectly normal, perfectly okay. Uh, okay. Everything's getting back on track or on the right track now, either one. Okay, but I Victor. thought you said that on the right track is more about the problem. No? Mm. Well... Like a, a solution, having a solution which will lead us to the right track. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's right. And that's pretty much what they're saying here. You had a fire, so everything was messed up. Um, back on track is probably what I would say here. Everything's getting on the right track. Okay, everything's back on track. Back, working normal. Is getting back on track, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Or is back on track or getting back on track? Well, if you say getting back on track, it's starting to be organized again. If you say back on track, everything is organized ah, again. Ah, is already. Okay, but everything is uh, back on track now. Everything's good now. We're, we're back on the path where we should be. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's it. They're all so closely related, we just express the idea, you know. Okay. Slightly different. There's many ways to express it, in other words. Victor, how about number 10? Did you see the match last night? What about that goal just before half time? He's incredible. He's an express train. When he gets the ball, <laughs> there's no stopping him. Ah, very good. All right, he's an express train. He? He's a freight train. Who is he? Who do you think it is? Messi? Uh, player. Uh, <laughs> the player, yeah, but which player? <laughs> main player. Uh, main player. Well, okay. Is it Messi? Is it uh, is that other guy? No, anyway. All right. The end of the line. You got a few more here that we can do. A few more fill in the blank exercises again, and these are also in uh, the uh, fill in the blank. As in a dialogue, one person would say one thing, and another person may reply with the with the with an idiom, okay. So Ming, here are the idioms you can choose from up here in bold italics. So number one, uh, so Ming. So are we going to give Roger another chance? He's already has five warnings about being late. I think we have we've reached. Um, the end of the nine. Yeah. We have to ask him to live. Yeah. All right. We've reached the end of the line. Now we come to the end, the ultimate total end. Um, yes, and you can talk about the end of anything here. Fine. You're talking about the end of Roger's employment, but you could talk about anything. Um, 
we wanted to sell all of Model XB24, and finally, we've moved all of the XB24 units out of inventory, and we finally reached the end of the line. Okay, very talking about something physically that stopped, or something more abstract that stopped. Either way, uh, the criminal was on a rampage for ten years. Finally, the police arrested him and brought him to the end of the law, end of the line. Okay, uh, Max, number two. I'm afraid we've never received your. I, I don't know how to pronounce how do I pronounce check. Yep. <laughs> it's obviously got lost somewhere along the line. <laughs> Maybe. Yes, somewhere along the line. Yeah. Okay. In Russia, if if you if somebody calls you and say, "When are you going to pay your electric bill?" Do you say, "Oh, it's in the mail." <laughs> okay. Check it in the mail. Uh, in American language, or British have the same thing. If we say the check is in the mail, not nah, okay. We could mean it literally. Okay, I've sent the payment in the mail. It's somewhere in transit. But also, it's basically the, a concept that, okay, I'm lying to you. You know I'm lying. I know I'm lying. You know I'm lying. Um, we both know I'm lying, but I, I'm not going to tell. I'm not going to say the truth because of whatever situation we're in. So I could, even if I'm not talking about making a payment, it may be common for me to go. Well, you know, check is in the mail, right? Okay, yeah, right, whatever. I know you have to lie. You know you have to lie. Okay, <laughs> it's the standard lie. All right, it got lost somewhere along the line, um, somewhere in transit. Alexandra, number three. If you are going to build your own house, make sure you've got the finance organized from the start. Yes, we don't want to have financial problems a couple of months. Um, hmm, a couple of months down the line. Very good. All right. Uh, some some length of time down the line, later down, or just later down the line, you hear okay. In the just simply means in the future. Notice all these idioms have to do with line, and uh, a line is the root of a train. Obviously, a train cannot deviate from its line because it must follow the tracks. All right. So down the line refers to the future. End of the line. The the end, the final finish, somewhere along the line in transit. Uh, okay, last one here, uh, Victor, number four. We've got no Victor, alternative. Yeah, go ahead. But to cancel the new project. I suppose so. We've had so many problems all along the line since the world go, in fact. Okay. We've had so many problems all along the line. Okay, so for the duration from the beginning to the end in many different places. Okay, uh, all right. Usually we use this idiom to talk about negative things, um, problems all along the line. All right, no one really wants to talk about. We've had really good luck all along the line. It is possible to say that, but... It's just highly unlikely. You know and I know people like to talk about problems and negative things, not really how fortunate they are. <laughs> uh, okay. All right, quick review. We've only got like five minutes. Let's uh, see if we can quick review here there. Uh, Some Ming. Reg, uh, Reg, out of steam. Ran out of steam. Have you ever run out of steam? I'm not sure. <laughs> All right. Have you ever been in the middle of a project or, or I don't know, building some, fixing something in your house, and you just get sick of doing it? 
I'm not going to do this anymore. Fixing these stupid cupboards. Forget it. <laughs> I'm going to go take a walk. Yeah, okay. You run out of steam. Nader, gone. Off. Number two, gone off the rails. Yeah. Have you ever uh, gone off the rails? Gone crazy? <laughs> okay. She's off off her rocker. <laughs> Another way to say crazy. In English, we have lots of idioms about crazy. That should be a class. Uh, Max, number three. Uh, back on the right track. <laughs> back, back on. Back on track. Yeah. Back yeah. on track. Or back on right. the right track. <laughs> yeah, no, 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 it's okay. You, again, you can see it in many different ways. Nader, yeah, I mentioned uh, she's gone off the rails. Okay, she's off a rocker. That's right, exactly, rocker. That refers to a rocking chair, the chair that old ladies sit in. Well, I kind of like them too, actually. But they have a, like a bow under the chair so they can rock back and forth. She's off her rocker. Uh, number four, Alexandra. She said BRB. Oh, she did. Okay, Victor, number four. The end of the line. Perfect. Okay, the ultimate end. All right. Have you ever reached the end of the line in a company, Victor? <laughs> All right. I don't know. You don't know? Doesn't oh. Well, okay, I have. I'm sick of talking to my boss. I'm sick of their stupid new rules. I'm sick of their policy changes every two days. I reached the end of the line. I reached the end of my rope. I gave up on working for that company, and I quit. All right, that's it. I've reached the end of the line. Um, like that. Uh Okay, Sun Ming, number five. Mm, um, much up in the end of the tunnel. Very good. All right, some final hope. It looks like we we may escape. We, there may be something good at the end. Uh, Nader, number six. Let off steam. Yeah. Hey there, I know how you let off steam. You like to go for a walk. Sort of relieve the stress. Okay, uh, Max, number seven. Under my own steam. All right. Do you often go places under your own steam? Uh, what, do, what do you mean? <laughs> uh, basically, basically, to make it simple, it means walk. <laughs> yeah, okay. Alone. You mean, yeah? Yeah, well, well, no. Just walk. Just use your own personal energy. So, you know, I go there by foot. I go there under my own steam. Um, okay. we, we usually use this idiom when we're comparing it to driving. Okay. No, I'd rather not take a car. I'd rather go there on my under my own steam. Um... Uh, uh, okay. Uh, oh, by the way, it could be bicycling. That uses your own en energy as well. So I'll take my bike. I I I'm going to go under my own steam. Okay. Yeah, I need more move under my yeah. own steam. <laughs> you, you need, need, me too. <laughs> well, I'll on that one. Yeah. Um, hey, there, I, I don't really think you walk for a living. I just think... Uh, that lately, the last couple to few classes, we've had uh, examples that come up. I don't know. It's a theme recently. Yeah, I know. You're kidding. Alexandra, somewhere. Are you there? Are you still BRB'd? Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> somewhere, um, somewhere along the line. Somewhere along the line. Yeah. Okay. I lost, I got off track somewhere along the line. You may hear those two idioms together. Um, okay. Uh, Victor, number nine. Two months 
down the line. Yep. yep. Later down the line, I see. I think we're going to have problems in the future. That's it. Some Ming. On the right chat. Okay, very good. Uh, you guys got all these. Thank you very much. We have reached what? We have end reached the, the, line. the <laughs> end of the line. Very good. Okay, uh, excellent. That is correct. We have reached the end of the line, so I bid you adieu. Ciao. And uh, you guys have a great day.